Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Cathedral on the traditional unceded territory of the Shimshan people. I am Bishop David Lehman and I welcome you to our service on this, the third Sunday of Advent, December 13th. On the second Sunday of the month, we worship from using the liturgy service of the word to. We invite you to enter in to reflect on our readings, to pray our prayers, and to sing the hymns, hopefully with much enthusiasm, as we offer our time of worship together. Our opening hymn is, There's a Voice in the Wilderness Crying. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. May we pray. We thank you, O God, that you have brought us again together on the Lord's Day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past, and your purpose in the week to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and arranged with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. I invite you to share the peace with those around you at this time, and as we do, we do it with a simple bow. Peace all. Our next hymn is Hark a Thrilling Voice is Sounding. collect for today. Together, let us pray. O God of Isaiah and John the Baptist, through all such faithful ones you proclaim the unfolding of the future joy and renewed life. Strengthen our hearts to believe your Advent promise that we will walk in the way of Christ, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. In a passage probably written after the people of Israel returned from exile to a devastated land, the prophet foretells the total salvation of God's people. Jesus used the opening verses as his text when he preached the good news in the synagogue at Nazareth. The first reading is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the 61st chapter and at the first verse. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. 
All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 126. We shall say the psalm responsibly by the whole verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Paul is drawing toward the conclusion of his letter. He has just exhorted the Thessalonian Christians regarding personal conduct and their relations within the community. Now he turns to spiritual matters. The second reading is written in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, beginning at the fifth chapter and the sixteenth verse. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is On Jordan's Bank.
John tells us about the Word, what God says and accomplishes in creation. Now the Word enters creation, and a prophet appears to bear witness to this cosmic event in our midst. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. We have an incredible scene in our Gospel reading today. A scene where John is out in the wilderness, out baptizing people, inviting them to return to the Lord their God and to continue in the covenant that he established with them. John, I honestly think, is such a dynamic, charismatic figure that people from all over are coming to hear him. Now, honestly, he's not the only person out in the wilderness doing this, but he's one that's captured people's imagination, that has struck a chord with the people. He is very clear about his message that he is proclaiming. He is very clear that he is inviting people to return to God and that he is there to prepare the way. And so into this scene comes the religious elite. Into this scene comes those who are holding fast to the traditions of the people because they're wondering, is John saying something more? Is John saying something that they're looking for. They're wondering, is John the one? Is John the Messiah that they are longing for, that they're just deeply desiring? And they get their answer. John is very clear as to who he is. John is very clear about what he is there to do. And so he is saying again with very clear words that we get to hear that he is the one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. He is hearkening back to that, that powerful prophetic voice saying that someone is coming. And it is that voice that we hear so very clearly in John. Part of our life together is about communication. It is about letting people know who we are and what we're about. In church land, that is about proclaiming a clear message of Jesus Christ and the glorious Trinity. And here's John 
modeling this for us. He's very clear as to who he is and what he's doing out in the wilderness. And yet that's not the message that some people are hearing. We can't be responsible for what people hear. Let me tell you, I remember preaching a sermon once and someone came and told me it was the best sermon they had heard about blank. And it had nothing to do with what I was talking about. It had no bearing on, but it was where their mind was at. And so we have to do, and we have to be mindful of several things. One is to be clear about the message that we are putting out. We need to be like John. We need to be pointing and witnessing to Jesus Christ. We need to be pointing and witnessing to the love of God. We need to be about proclaiming the good news of God in Jesus. And we have to say it over and over and in many different ways. Sometimes in difficult ways and sometimes in joyous ways. And that is the message that we are called to give in everything that we do. And we have to ensure that that is the message that we are giving and that we're not complicating it at all. That we aren't polluting it with other distractions and trying to soften the edges. I listened to something called God Pod. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to it, I recommend if you want to pick up a, 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 a podcast that is theologically weighted. Uh, there is a wonderful series they have on heresies, and they talk about how heresies come about because we try to soften the edges and sort of struggle with the hard message that is there. And that's part of our communication, that we have to struggle with the hard messages that are there and that we can't try to soften it because in softening it, we lose the focus, we lose the message. And so we're reminded that we're called to that. We're called to be active listeners. And I'm sure people are rolling their eyes right now saying, yeah, 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 I, I've been taught that. But often in life, we are so busy not listening, but preparing our response, preparing our rebuttal, preparing for what we're going to say next, that we aren't listening to the person. Other times, we're just not paying attention whatsoever. I had a, a meme come across my Facebook the other day, and it, it talked about uh, the wife saying, you never listen to me, and the husband's commenting, I'm not sure why she seems to start conversations this way. Well, obviously, somebody's not listening whatsoever. And, and, and I can say this one because I'm a single guy. And I don't have to fear retribution because I probably would fall in that camp of not listening. And we're called to be active listeners, to really pay attention to what someone is saying and not worry so much about what we will say next or how we need to respond or, you know, running it through whatever series of filters we want to run it through, but to be very present and to listen. Because I think if the people who had come to John had stopped and truly listened and put aside their agenda of looking for the Messiah, to hear what he was saying for a moment, they would have gone, oh yeah, that's it. He's pointing the way. He's saying, get ready. He's saying, I'm not the one. But they want to cut to the chase, want to get to the fast end of it, and they aren't prepared to listen. It's kind of like if you've ever watched a Shakespearean play or read a Shakespearean dra drama, um, you realize that any question you might have is going to be answered in about three lines anyways. And you just have to wait, hold on to that question for but a moment and you'll have your answer. It's the same with John. It's the same with so many parts of our lives that we need to actively listen. The last part is we need to be mindful of who we're listening to. We need to be mindful of the voices that we go and seek out to listen to. Now, sometimes we need that comfortable voice. We need that message that, that um, will sit well with us. And, and there are times which that's helpful and grounding. But if that's all we have, if that's all we're searching for is sycophants to say the things that we long to hear, then we're really not listening at all. 
We're not listening to the wider story. We're not listening to the wider message. We're not listening to the wider context of where we're at. We have to be listening, be mindful of who we're listening to. A few years ago, I was heading off on retreats and the retreat leader said, I know you all brought work with you. I know you all brought things to read with you. Be mindful of who you brought with you. I thought it was a very helpful thing to say because I was able to put down some things that I brought with me and focus on that which I brought that would complement the retreat and, and, and be part of that process. In our own lives, we need to be mindful that we listen not only clearly, but to voices that may not always agree with us, to voices that may differ from what, we're, what we want to hear. Partly because it helps us to clarify our own position, it helps us to clarify what we mean, and, and partly it helps us appreciate that, we, that not only can we be listened to, but we can listen to someone else. Listening doesn't mean we have to agree with everything. Listening means we respect the person and that we're entering to a process of understanding. And while we may come away still not agreeing uh, on whatever we were listening and talking about, we can at least have that common experience of being heard. I don't think John felt that he was heard in our reading today, which is sad because he's very clear about who he is and and our gospel reading points, or sorry, our, our reading from the, from the Hebrew scripture point is one that Jesus quotes later on and makes that very bold statement about who he is. And, and, and there's very clear statements from our Lord and his cousin about who they are. And we have to listen to them. And we have to listen to those other voices that are around us. Because we can, if we listen to the Pharisees and the scribes, you can hear there's a hopefulness, a desire, a longing, and that we can just point them in the right direction, which is what John's trying to do. When we listen to the world that we're in, there is a longing and a hopefulness and a desire and we can root that in Jesus Christ. We also hear a whole bunch of other voices that aren't helpful. And we need to be gentle about that and be truthful about what we are hoping for, what we long for, and who we are. We have to be like John. So I pray this day that as we go out into the world moving towards Christmas, as we're now sort of in the final push of things, as we go about our lives, that we be clear about who we are, about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, and the hope and the love that flows from that. We have to be mindful of making sure that we're listening, and that we're actively engaged in that. Not only to those people that we are in a small bubble with right now, uh, because that would be really helpful, but also because there is a larger story going on around us, and we need to hear that as well, and be able to respond to the needs of our neighborhoods, our communities, our country, and how the gospel responds to that. We also have to be mindful of who we're listening to, and how there are many voices and that we can't just listen to those that we find comfortable. We have to listen to those other voices, some that are prophetic in the good way and some that are distracting and be able to discern between them and know that God is trying to communicate through all that to us. May God bless you this week and strengthen you and give you the wisdom and insight as you listen and prepare. Amen. Let us confess our baptismal faith as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families and friends and neighbors, and for all those who are alone, for this community, our country, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the Gospel, and all who seek the truth, for David our Bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in the Church, for our own needs, and for those of others. We name them aloud, hold them in our hearts, or share them in the comments box where others may enter into prayer with you. We pray this day for all who are suffering from the coronavirus, for those who are in hospital, particularly ICU beds, for those who are at home, for those whose recovery is longer, and for those anxiously awaiting test results, for their families and friends that journey with them, sometimes not as close as they'd like to be, for the medical people, the doctors, the nurses, and all the myriad of staff who care for those who are suffering from COVID and all other ailments, that they may be kept protected and safe as they tend to our sick and injured. We pray for all who suffer from financial distress at this time, for those worried about their futures and their employment, for those suffering and anxious about food safety, for those who are in times of transition for those who are in grief and unable to voice their sorrow as they normally would. For those who are laboring uh, and trying to get through these days, that God's hand may be upon them all and that God may give us all an extra measure of patience and compassion. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And we encourage you now to think over this past week of how God has blessed you or someone you know, and that we can offer our praise to God for that. I give thanks that we can gather this way, that we can be together, though apart and offer up our common worship to God over this cyber way. I give thanks for the ministry and the life of this diocese, for those who are tending to uh, the pastoral needs of our con communities, for those who are feeding the poor and, and uh, helping clothe them uh, through our food banks, our soup kitchens, and our thrift shops for all who continue to labor in God's vineyard, I am most thankful. We will exalt you, O God our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom praying particularly for all 
who have died this past week from COVID. Let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your continued financial support of your parish and the diocese. It is most appreciated in these difficult days. If you're looking for a way to contribute, we can use, uh, suggest uh, electronic fund transfers, uh, post-dated checks to, uh, dropped off to the church or the diocese, and websites like canadahelps.org or PayPal Charity. Again, thank you for your support of your tithe offering. Our offertory hymn is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Together we pray. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, and in the language closest to our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our worship today. And we invite you to join us throughout the week as we continue to gather virtually to offer our time of prayer together. Monday to Saturday at 7 a.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Mountain, 
Father, Pastor Don from St. Mark's Dawson Creek leads us in morning prayer. At 1215 Pacific, 115 Mountain, the Dean from here at St. Andrews will lead us in midday prayer. Monday to Friday, uh, later in the afternoon, Father Wilfred from the Bulkley Valley Parish will lead us in a spiritual journey reflection. Nightly at 9 p.m., I join you for Compline at 9 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Mountain uh, from the Bishop's Study. We pray that you continue to offer up your prayers and to be a support to one another and to your community as we are in these days. Be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, untiring in love all the days of your life. And the blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and indeed forevermore. Amen. Our concluding hymn is, I the Lord of the Sea and Sky.
glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.